Hello, my name is Hamara Ansari and I've just finished my PhD in chemical engineering. My research is focused on carbon storage and shales. Climate change is caused by an increased amount of human activity related carbon dioxide emissions, which have led to a rise in global temperatures as seen by this compelling image. We were progressively getting redder or warmer and we need to figure out what to do with the carbon dioxide or CO2 we produce to avoid catastrophic damage to Earth. CO2 is mostly produced by fossil fuel production and usage. Carbon capture and storage, or CCS, were the main ways to mitigate the effects of climate change. It's a method of capturing that CO2 released from these sources and storing it long term, deep underground. And although CCS technology is available, there is still not a big enough push for industry to carry out CCS yet. We will continue fossil fuel usage while we transition to a lower, lower carbon economy. What if we could incentivize CCS by increasing production of the cleanest fossil fuel, natural gas? Natural gas is such a fuel. It's produced by fracking of shales, one of the most common rocks on Earth, but this often has poor efficiencies. Combining this with CO2 storage could lead to permanent sequestration of CO2, but also improved natural gas recovery. Proving feasibility of this process is the focus of my research. So with my work, I try to answer four main questions. Firstly, how is gas stored in shales? Natural gas is, is, has existed in shale for many years and it is stored in the form of absorption. Think of shales like a sponge. It has small pores where gas can sit and interact with the surface. The pores are so small that gas molecules experience the pore wall significantly and get physically bonded to the surface. But space is there for shales. Essentially, how many pores and how much volume does my sponge or shale have? I measured this through cryogenic gas absorption and I obtain pore volume as a function of pore diameter. So essentially, how much volume is basically assigned to a given size of pore. Main conclusion, main conclusion is that shales have pores that are nanometric in size, so very small, and there's significant pore space for gas to live, which is great because we actually have a lot of CO2 to store. Next, now that I know how much space I have, how much CO2 can I store at the conditions of the subsurface, so whatever is underground? The subsurface can be hot and very high in pressure because it is so deep. I measure absorption in these conditions with both CO2 and methane, which is what natural gas is mainly composed of. The conclusion here is that CO2 um, absorbs up to three times more than natural gas or methane. And lastly, how do we actually engineer this process? How do we design this? So to to sort of understand this, I modeled this process by having three stages. Injection, where we inject CO2. Soak, where we let the sponge or shale soak up that CO2. And production, where we produce as normal our natural gas. Some CO2 will also flow out, um, which we can then se uh, separate and re-inject into the next um, injection cycle. We observe that we can store up to half of the CO2 we inject and produce a lot more methane than we would without injection. In reality, we could design a multi-well system for the cyclic injection process in which some wells are injecting, some wells are soaking, and some wells are producing so we don't experience time delays and operators are satisfied. So I'm on the way to improving that carbon storage in shales is feasible and there's both an economic and environmental benefit in implementing this process. Thank you very much for listening.